Oh, thanks so much. Look, how exciting is this? Look how close you are to a stranger. <laughs> Reach out and touch them if they give consent. Like, do it. <laughs> it's so exciting, isn't it? But do you know what I've noticed since all this happened? People have forgotten how to be in public. Like, they're sharing way too much information <laughs> because they were locked in their house with their families for two months. My first gig back, which was, you know, a couple of months ago now, <laughs> there was a, two people, there was two people in the front row. There were a man and a woman. And I asked them, I said, are you two a couple? And she said, no, we're just friends. And then she went, well, we fucked a couple of times, but <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> I was like, that's information you wouldn't normally have shared. So I'm on a national tour, and last night I did a gig in Dunedin, and a guy came back from the toilet, like while I was on stage, and I went, oh, you are right, mate? And he went, yeah, I just took a shit. <laughs> but there's something about men, particularly, and our brains stop developing at a certain point, don't they? Like, I'm a 40-year-old man, but in here is the brain of an 11-year-old boy. <laughs> and I know this, because dicks and bums are still very funny to me. <laughs> They shouldn't be. I've got one of both of those. <laughs> I see it all the time. Still, pretty funny. <laughs> Do you know what the funniest thing in the world is? A naked man running downstairs. <laughs> Just think about that for a second. <laughs> That's the stuff that makes me laugh. And that can be a problem because I have my own children and I have my own responsibilities at home. Now, one of my responsibilities at home is I do all the cooking in our house, right? I'm the cook. Uh, and uh, so I did, like, over lockdown, I did 49 dinners in a row, for example. All right. Thank you. Thanks. I should have gone for 50 because I'm a cricket fan. But on the day they let us go to takeaways, I was done. <laughs> But here's something that happened, this actually happened before lockdown, and this is why my 11-year-old boy brain is a bit of a problem. So I made a pie once, like a chicken pie, like a family-sized pie. I uh, made my own pastry from scratch, don't want to go on about it. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I, no, 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 I don't want more applause. <laughs> I don't, no, no, because I don't want to make you feel bad if you use the sheets from the supermarket. <laughs> okay, that's fine too. The only difference between me and you is, I love my family. Now, <laughs> now I'd finished the pie, completed, but I still had a chunk of the pastry dough left over. Now, anyone who's made pastry knows it's quite tricky, and you don't want to waste it. You don't want to just throw it away. It doesn't really keep. So I did what any fully grown man with an 11-year-old boy's brain in his head would do with that dough. And on the top of the pie, I made a little sculpture. You know the kind of sculpture I mean, don't you? You guys know, right? I made a face. I'm not sure what you were thinking. <laughs> you know the kind of face I mean? Two big round googly eyes. <laughs> and a long nose. <laughs> and no mouth. <laughs> it was a D&B, right? And I was proud of it. It was a good one. Like, I'm not that artistic, but well, this was good. And if you're wondering, not Jewish. So, <laughs> so look, my wife's used to this kind of idiot behavior, and it's obviously for her, right? So I assume what would happen was that she would see it, she would either laugh or be disgusted, I don't care, right? <laughs> she would take it off, throw it away, that would be the end of it. But something happened during the day that day, we didn't end up eating the pie that night. So, we actually went out for dinner. So what I did was I put a lid on it, put it in the fridge, thinking, this comedy gold will wait a day. <laughs> Forgetting that the next day, I was out of town. I went away. So she, and I forgot completely I'd done this, so she just went to the fridge in the late afternoon, thinks, oh, good, dinner's already made. Takes it out, puts it in the oven, doesn't look at it, heats it up, takes it out, puts it on the table, and just presents it to the family. <laughs> And her mother was over for dinner. <laughs> now, I have two daughters. They're nine and seven. Uh, now, we're pretty modern parents, I guess. Like, we've taught them the parts of the body. They know what boys have. They know what girls have. So they just look at it and they go, oh, it's a penis pie. 
and then they start arguing over which bit they want to eat. <laughs> whilst banging their knives and forks on the table, chanting, penis pie, penis pie, we want some penis pie. And I wish that's where that particular story ends. But it's not. Because the next day, they went to school. <laughs> now you're a smart crowd, I can tell you've jumped ahead of me here. You think they went to school and they told someone about it. No, they didn't do that. They wrote about it. <laughs> My little seven-year-old wrote in her little storybook that they write in every day the following story. It's only two sentences long. <laughs> My daddy made a penis pie. <laughs> Full stop. Don't worry, it didn't taste like penises. <laughs> so the court case is coming up pretty soon. Thank you very much for all your work. You guys have been awesome. Cheers. Good night. <laughs>